greatly bless you. My name is Apostle Diana Edu. On Facebook, I'm Scarlett Edu Priesthood. How are you doing, my dear brother and sister? Happy Lord's Day. As I promised on my Facebook that I would be here live. Yes, I am here with the word of God. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your word. Thank you so much for another day. Thank you for the gift of life. Okay, thank you for my friends out there that you have ordained to join tonight's recording, tonight's segment. Be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted, be exalted. Be exalted, be exalted. Please worship with me. Worship with me. Revelation chapter 4. After these things, I looked, and behold, the door standing open in heaven. And the first voice I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after these come here come up here my dear brother come up here my dear sister the lord says come with me through the segment and he will show you things which must take place after this revelations for one come with an open heart Come with faith. Come with trust. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy legend, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Come up here with me, and I will show you. Come here with me. I will show you means I would open your mind. I will show you means I would open your spirit. I will show you means I will give you understanding. As song says, in the abundance of water, the pool is thirsty. I will show you me. I will make you insightful. Come here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. Have you been sick in the face of God? Are you waiting for the faith, are you seeking the face of God for answers? I pray that through this segment, the Lord Almighty will speak to you. God bless you. Someone is already watching. The camera is very far from me, so I can't see, but I suspect it's my husband. I suspect he's always the first to tune in. Hallelujah. Sha da 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 as we worship, Scripture declares in Psalm 22, verse 3, God inhabits the praises of his people. He is the only one that unveils mysteries unto his children. In times of darkness where the world has no answers, Jesus says, come with me through this segment. And he's going to show you the answer. He's going to show you the place. He's going to give you the key. He is going to point you to the direction that you must go. Scripture says, and I will sing with my spirit and I will sing with my mind. And so as you join me, I want you to begin to speak in tongues, sing in tongues, sing with your spirit and sing 
with your mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelations 4, verse 2. Immediately I was in the spirit. Did you see? <laughs> John's writings and his revelations about the end times came because he was in the spirit. My dear brother and sister, we walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. Another one, friend to his watching. God bless you. We walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is a spirit. We walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And I can guarantee you, if you don't walk in the spirit, you lose your mind. You cannot understand. You will crush your mind until it breaks. But if you walk in the spirit, God says, come up. And that is why he's going to show you. Do you know the disciples, the three, that were always with Jesus, Peter, James, and John, only were able to see the Lord with Elijah and Moses because they were in the spirit. Speak in the spirit with me. Da, 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 da. Whilst we're worshiping, I want to invite my friends to join me. Hallelujah. <laughs> you're going through. It might be a trouble you're going through. It might be a challenge you're going through. I'm telling you, if you would come with me, if you would worship in the spirit, if you would tune into the spirit, you would find the cause to the case. Hallelujah. 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 Rato de Broyaka Sotaya de. Hallelujah. Rege de Grace don Tandi Diabe. Hallelujah. Nefe di Kitty Anton di Briape. Hallelujah. I'm invited, my friends, so I want you also to invite your friends. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
We love you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, be enthroned upon our praise tonight. Jesus, be enthroned upon our worship tonight. Azedigados, kepriatalandos, gibriante. Rabadadada, tole broka soyante. I want you also to invite your friends. Hallelujah. God bless you. I see a big love heart from my husband. I see also Soja, J. Michael, Maxwell. God bless you, Soja. Soja is also watching. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've invited my friends. I want you also to invite your friends as we worship. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 4. Verse 2, John says, Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now, if you are in the spirit, you see one in the spirit, sitting on the throne in the spirit, then you have the understanding that the throne is not like the throne set in your home. The throne is not like the throne set at the king's palace, the queen's palace. This is a spiritual throne. I was talking to a person who has a stool in their home. In Africa, especially in Ghana, when somebody says, I have a stool in my home, it means they have a spirit that demands their worship. And that spirit is the king that rules their affairs of that family so the person this throne seemed to be have been turning against its own people and uh, one of the old ladies said after all we've locked it in the room so you can't do anything and I said you got it all wrong <laughs> locking the physical symbol of that spiritual thing you don't lock a spirit in a room. Do you remember Jesus walking through straight through the door to enter into the room that the disciples had bounded and closed that nobody could enter? The spirit just walked through freely. I see another person to watch and God richly bless you. The camera is far so I can see. So that is why you need to walk in the spirit. Because in the flesh, you are already granted a, a loser. Listen, I was telling my husband, I said, one angel appeared to Daniel, he fainted. <laughs> An angel appeared to Joshua, he fell down. The presence of God was seen by Paul, he got blind. Who are we human beings to fight spirits? That is why Paul says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You don't fight what is happening, coronavirus, with only the person. I am here tonight, and the word, the theme for my, 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 my communion says, you see a plague, I see a sword. But there is a sword out there that is slaying and, and killing people. But where I come from in Ghana, we have a proverb among the Ghana that comes. We say that dear because that you. There is an iron, there is a rod, there is a weapon that is invincible. So I am introducing to you an invincible weapon against an invisible enemy. An invincible, invincible means undefeatable, undefatigable. He cannot be defeated. The sword of the Lord is a winning sword from the foundation of the world until the end that it is going to be renewed. The sword of the Lord stands victorious. The sword of the Lord is a victorious sword. The sword of the Lord is our vindicator. The sword of the Lord is our defense. 
The sword of the Lord is our shield. The sword of the Lord is our buckler. The sword of the Lord is our armor. The sword of the Lord is our protector. Worship with me. Worship with me. Ya to do 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 ya ndi. strength. Thy grace I do. Thy word I am. The glory of the Lord. Jesus, mighty God, his name is Jesus, sovereign Lord, Jesus, 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 his name is Jesus. Because it is a sword. 
You know there is a sword that is mightier than that sword. Many people are given answers to what is happening in the world. I, before everything broke out, saw the spirit of death ransacking homes, taking away lives. Some theologians don't want to hear that spirit called the angel of death. But I want to take you through the scripture. If you are languished, if your sword is strength, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The world might not have solution. It doesn't mean Jesus is out there scratching his head and saying, ah, yeah, 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 what can I do for the world now? Hey, what do I do? Jesus has not gathered the angels to think about how they can invent a vessel. No, no. No, 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 no. Before the coronavirus began, Jesus knew and he is Lord. So before we enter into worship, I want to take you through scripture. And then to give you a purpose to worship with me, a purpose to worship with me tonight. This is the research that I did with regards to the coronavirus. As I was telling you, I saw the spirit of death run sucking homes even before it became big news. Some people like my husband, who is an eschatologist, thinks it is a sign of the end of the world. And it's the plague that has been prophesied in the book of Revelations. Whether it is a plague from the book of Revelations, or this angel of death has been released for a purpose, I want us to see how Bible gives understanding when something like this happened to people of the world. Last week, we saw that Jesus was saying that the closure of churches should not be taken for granted because he told us in the book of Revelation that if we mess up with his church, whatever church that is messing up, he will take you out. When you read the book of the prophets, we see continuously the same thing. So we cannot, as Christians, take things for granted. We have to know what is happening. And the only one that has an answer to what is happening is Jesus. And as I sought his face tonight, the only thing he put on my heart is to come here and worship with you. Why worship? Why worship? We saw how people stood around their corridors to sing. Singing has been research as a weapon of hope in time of war and it is the same thing we see in scripture even though the world sees singing as a weapon of hope in the time of war bible unveils to add that singing is more than a weapon of hope in the time of war singing worshiping praising the lord is a weapon of war. Our Paul tells us the weapon of our war, they are not candle. Praise is cannot be held with the hands. So praise and worship is a weapon. Friday, whilst I was teaching in the Italian segment on Friday, yes, the spirit of the Lord was we were going through Second Chronicles chapter 20, where King Jehoshaphat appoint the singers and the choir. The singers and the choir were made of priests. They were sacred men that were set apart. Sacred people that were set apart. Not as we will be treating singers today. 
for the priest and the Levite, the priest who blew the trumpet, the Levites who were the choristers in their sacred garment, and Jehoshaphat put them in front of the army. Who is the army fighting the on the front line fighting the coronavirus? It is the medical doctors, the health workers, the nurses. They are the ones on the front line. They have become the military, the warriors fighting this invisible enemy. The drivers, the technicians, the service people, those working in the supermarket. But the government missed out one thing. The government closed and has closed the UK from the 23rd of uh march the government announced locking down every institution schools everything except essential those the government deems as essential which are the hospitals the hospitals that care for our bodies the supermarkets that feed our bodies but we know from free scripture that human beings are spirit with souls living in bodies. So our bodily needs have been taken care of. But the spiritual part of man, which according to Proverbs, sustain man. Bible says it is the spirit of the man that sustains him, a wounded spirit who shall bear. The spirit of man. What says the spirit of man has been locked down. So the world has missed out on something thank god bible says in matthew chapter 18 that where two or three are gathered yes the band says a gathering of more than two so the church cannot meet but thank god as if jesus knew two thousand years ago and prophesied where two or three are gathered in my name i am here you are there this is church <laughs> king jehoshaphat says he going to war knowing he cannot fight this enemy is useless putting the army out there to go and fight an enemy they know they can't defeat so jehoshaphat remembers some time ago in the bible moses was crossing the red sea and the sea was closed <laughs> And Moses said, Lord, what should I do? God said, why are you asking me when I've given you the weapon? The people were harassing Moses. God said, raise your rod over the sea. Many people think Moses lifted his physical rod and that is why the sea opened. We know from scripture, Psalm 114 says that, oh, see, see, what did you see? That you split into two. The psalmist is telling us that, sorry. The psalmist is telling you and I that the sea split into two not because they saw Moses' rod. They split into two because they saw who God, Psalm 114. Jordan, Jordan also split into two because they saw God. How did they see God? How do I know that Moses used praise and worship to open the Red Sea? Bible says that God sits in the praises of his people. Psalm 114 says God, the sea saw God. When? When Moses lifted the rod, it means Moses lifted a praise unto God. How do I know? In Revelations, Bible calls out the song of Moses. The same thing is said in the book of Exodus. He said after they crossed the sea, they sang the song of Moses and the song of Miriam. You should just know that they did not sing only after crossing the sea. It is the singing that opened the sea. Hallelujah. So King Jehoshaphat remembered that if he can have victory over the invincible enemy, he has to use the only weapon that he knows 
that has always proved to work for the people of Israel. Indeed, Psalm 78 and I think Psalm 89 say that Israel never went to war without God because the people of Ephraim went to war with their weapons and came back defeated because they did not go with war. How does Israel, how did Israel's army, how was the formation of Israel's army? According to scripture, we know in the book of Joshua chapter 6, the same thing happens. God's army officer, the captain of the Lord's army, meets Joshua who is terribly afraid. They have to go and win and conquer Jericho. Fear has gripped all of them like fear has gripped King Jehoshaphat. Fear has gripped everyone because of coronavirus. But the angel of the Lord tells Jehoshaphat. You see, there is something that I was pondering. Je um, Joshua asked the angel in Joshua chapter 6, Are you for us or you are against us? Are you for us or you are for our enemies? And the angel says, and this angel had a sword. The angel says, I am for the Lord and those on the Lord's side. And orders Joshua how he can win the war. He should put musicians in front of the military and walk around the war once every day putting the worship leaders in front of the army would some governor listen to me will some political leader listen to me will some president somewhere listen to me will someone who is connected to the president to the leaders of his country listen to me can you do something can you put musicians in the world, wear them the protective garments, and put them in the world? If you can't, we are here. Music goes in front of the army. And tonight as we worship, we pray that our worship will enter into every wash, uh, every world in the United Kingdom. That our worship will enter into every, into the, how do you call it? The ninth angle hospital. That the worship will become the shield that will protect our doctors, that will protect our, 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 our nurses. Many Africans here, our nurses are in the health services. Our daughters are in the health services. We can push them out to, like lambs led to the slaughter. We need to cover them in one way or another. How can we cover our children? We can cover them by putting the instrumentalists, the warriors. Who are the warriors? The musicians. We can put them in front of the army. And tonight that is what we are going to do. And we pray that the spirit of the Lord will situate us, will transport our music, make it because the angels of music to transport our music into every ward, into every city, into every town, into every hospital, into every nation, into the refugee camps, into places that are not protected, into our homes. Hallelujah! To shield us. And Israel put the musicians in front of the soldiers and on the seventh day as they went round singing for the lord is good and his love endures forever the walls came down joshua chapter 6 we go to second chronicles jehoshaphat is afraid to fight the enemy so god he remembers what god did with moses he remembers what God did with Joshua. And he put the singers. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22 says, and they put 21 says, and they put the musicians in front of the army. And they went out to fight. Hey, and Bible says, and the singers started singing, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. And they sang all night. In the morning when they woke up. 
they sent a spy to see the encampment of the enemy and they see that all the enemy had been slain in one single night god did not do it only for jehoshaphat this time god caused the enemy to slay themselves the sword they lifted against israel returned and backfired upon themselves they banded themselves against israel but when israel lifted their praise unto god instead of arrogantly pushing the army trusting in their chariot for Bible says some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. We don't want to trust in any person. We don't want to trust in any human uh, ability. We want to trust ourselves in this time that a sword is outside under the mighty hand of God. Bible says in Psalm 8 verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and children, God has ordained a weapon to silence the enemy, the foe, and the avenger. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, God has ordained praise to silence three enemies that came against Jehoshaphat. The enemy is someone who just doesn't like you. The foe is another that is just competing with you. Anything you do, they want to contend. Actually, the word Satan, that is what it means. Someone who comes your way, always trying to block you. And the avenger, this is the serious one. I pray God will give me another segment so we talk about. The avenger is the one that has legal right to kill you. The demon that has the legal right to give you a sickness running through your bloodline. This is the avenger of blood. Yet God says, even though there is a demon, that demands that you go mad because of your grandfather and grand, your, your ancestry killed someone. The avenger of blood, according to law, is the one that avenges the blood of one in their family that was wrongfully killed. And we know those of us from idolatrous countries. They used to kill people to lay foundations. 2020 is a time of foundation. It is the time that the strength of the avenger of blood. It is the voice of Abel that seeks vengeance. Yet the Bible says the Lord is our refuge. Do you know what refuge means? In the Old Testament, Israel was ordered by God to steal six cities of refuge. So that if you did not willfully kill, you run there and you cannot be killed until you are judged. And when the high priest died, you are free. Jesus, according to scripture, is our city of refuge. There is a sword out there. I don't know why God allowed the sword. I don't know if it is a bio, bio weapon. But I know is that whatever God does allow cannot happen. So there is a sword out there killing. I read my Bible and I saw the same situation taking place in the book of in the book of Exodus. In the land of Egypt, God said he will go through the land and kill every firstborn of Egypt. It was the angel of the Lord that went out there. And told the Israelites too to mark their door. Those that were sealed, they did not die. That is why he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High and abides under the shadow of the Almighty and has said the Lord is his refuge cannot be killed. You cannot die with coronavirus. I didn't hear you say amen. The angel of God went out there. There is a sword out there slaying but bible says those of us that have been marked by the blood we shall live and not die to declare the works of god say it with me i i will live and not die to declare the works of god amen at midnight the lord struck down all the firstborn of egypt from the prisoner to the prince 
I see another situation in 2 Kings chapter 19. The Bible says that one night God's angel went out to put to death 185,000 people because they lifted their horns against Israel. I don't know how they died. But because they came against God's people, God killed them. Their not physical death could not be explained by doctors. Suddenly they saw people were dying and they didn't know the cause and they could not stop it. The Bible tells us that this dying, there is an angel that is holding a sword in the spiritual realm. As for me, the vision I saw was this angel of death breaking into homes, stripping children. If I tell you to 2 Samuel chapter 24, 15 verse 16, you call it a plague. You call it a virus. I call it the angel of death. I call it the sword of the enemy. In 2 Samuel 24, 15, 16, Bible says David broke God's law. He shouldn't have counted the people in his nation and he did it. And God sent the prophet God to him. Yes, I think it's God. And said, David, three punishments is for you. A plague. Three days. Famine. And you running away and your enemy chasing you. And David said, so we know famine can, the cause of famine can be spiritual. You being persecuted is not always blessed are the persecuted. It can be your stubbornness and its way of straightening you up. And the third is plagues. Read through all scripture. Many times, any time there is a plague, the cause is spiritual. And we, when we say those are ah, Africans, this has nothing to do with Africa. This is Bible. That is why the president of Tanzania said he will not close churches because coronavirus is satanic. And I know they are laughing at him. And the opposition are fighting him. But at least we got one sensible person who knows that man is a spirit with a soul living in a body. I don't condone with mass gathering. But churches should be open. If supermarkets allow 15 people to enter with social distancing, and the church and the elders, about 15, can enter, so they would intercede for the land, this place should have stopped by now. If we had put musicians in wards, this is Bible, it's not my philosophy. And that is what we are going to do. Musicians have been placed as secondary in churches. No! In the time of war, in the time of famine, in the time of plague, read the book of Jeremiah chapter 9. In the time of plague, what is happening? When everything is shut down, Jeremiah chapter 9 says that, Call the wailing women and let them lament and intercede for the nation. They say a woman cannot be a pastor. A woman cannot be a fivefold minister. I have a book coming out soon. It is called God is not a chauvinist. And I discuss the origin of this thinking. And why it is never true that God does not use women. When a of the nation like this has taken place and people are dying. Jeremiah invokes the ministry of the wailing women to come. Wailing women were singers, eh? And they were singing dirges. They were skilled women. Ministers, apostles, prophets, they were in the prophetic ministry. And while they sing, they would read into the realms of the spirit, pronouncing, decreeing, Jeremiah called them in the same way Jesus in Luke chapter 23 prophesied about the destruction of Jerusalem 
and appointed wailing women, called them. Jesus ordained them and said, if you will will for the land, they call it lamentation. If you sing dirges and prophesy, a remnant will be saved. And scholars say that a remnant was saved. Some of the Christians, not everyone, they escaped because they listened to the prophetic songs of the women. In 2 Kings chapter 19, sorry, 2 Samuel, David says, God, let me fall in your hands. Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 24, 15 to 16, so the Lord sent a plague. The Lord, not Satan. Now, when you see the Lord sent a plague, my interpretation from the visions, my spiritual world and from Twitter, shows that God allowed, like he allowed Satan to plague Job. He allowed the spirit of death to, to do what? To slay. To slay. So God allowed the sickness, the coronavirus, or whatever plague this one was, on Israel from morning until the end of the time designated, which was three days. I think it was three days, yes. Let us check well. Second Samuel 24, please. Second Samuel 24. I want us to check very well, you know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope someone is praying for me, eh? Okay. Second Samuel 24. It says. It says. God, God came to David and told him. Choose between seven years of famine or running away three months before your enemies while they pursue you or three days of plague. This plague is not three days. It's more than three days. And I don't know. They appointed the time for it. And then they said, And David said, I am in great distress. Please let us fall into the hands of the Lord. So the Lord sent a plague from morning till the appointed time from Dan to Sheba, and 70,000 people died. It says 70,000 men. So we know encountered the women and the children. They were not exempt and they died. So the Lord sent a plague, right? But the Bible says that when the angel stretched out his hands to destroy Jerusalem, so then we know that there was an angel that was provoking the plague. Plague means sore, sickness, epidemic. That cannot be. Used. He says when the so we know there was an angel out there that had been assigned to watch over the destruction through plague, through coronavirus when the angel straight out is sent to destroy the church the Lord relented the disaster and said to the angel only God can speak to coronavirus to go away I am not against medicine eh because second Kings chapter 16 verse 12 says Asa arrogantly got sick and in his arrogance he did not seek the face of God. It is arrogance. Bible says, and Asa used only medicine. It is God that gave the gift of sign. 
It is God that tells us in the book of Ezekiel that the heads and in Revelation are for our healing, the healing of the nations. But it is arrogance to use medicine only not using God. Second Chronicles 16, 12. It is arrogant to push your army and to go and fight without God. Moses said, God, if your presence does not go with me, I will not go. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Every nation is under God. He is the governor of nations. It is time that we recall that nations are like a drop in a bucket to God. It is time that we bow our knee to the king of the nations. It is time we put him first place in our lives. It is time we reverence the Lord. It is time we put ourselves aside and make God God in our nation. God, God in our family. God, God in our city. God, God in our schools. God, God on our streets. If God is not on our streets, the sword is what is ruling our streets. So it was an angel that was provoking the plague. And it is God who spoke to the angel. Saying to the angel that was afflicting the people, enough. Tonight, God, as we worship, would you speak to this angel provoking coronavirus and the spread of this pandemic to redraw their hands in your matchless name? God, enough. Enough. God, enough. Adozi gede 70,000 people died. Coronavirus. If we count UK alone, from the time it began, this is the world chart. UK alone, the total cases is 152,840. New cases are 4,463. Total death. Is to truly arrive 70,000? No, enough, God. Enough. 20,000 people, 20,732. New death, 4,000. It is not a thousand will fall by my side, 10,000, and I don't care. God says, I'm looking for someone to intercede in the land. If God is giving us this revelation, because he does not wish that any should perish. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 11. He is standing the gap to deliver those that are dying and those that are being led to the slaughterhouse and have no help. Tonight, the purpose is that we have a key. God said by praise, Psalm 8 verse 2. He shuts and takes away the power of the enemy. The foe, the avenger, a land that pours out blood becomes impure. And at that point, God releases such kinds of plagues. But we stand in the gap to tell the Lord, as he did with Ezekiel in Ezekiel 9, sealing everyone. Listen. In Ezekiel chapter 9, Bible says that the sin of the church had come to the nose of God. Physically, you see people having church service, but in the realms of the spirit, they were worshipping idols. They have even brought the idol into the church. Jesus said, I'm watching my church. You, who has an idol in your church? Jesus says, he's watching. And there were women who were specialized in a kind of sacrifice to the idol they have brought to the gate of the temple. Enter his gate with thanksgiving. Now it was enter his gate with weeping. And they were weeping for taboo. It was a river. The house of God. The house of God. 
So God released his sword in his own house. I don't know. If God has released also coronavirus, the churches has closed. But I don't know. If the sword is also appointed to the household. But what I know in the book of Ezekiel is that though a sword was appointed out there, God sealed those that were faithful to him. And tonight, I worship. Be sealed in the name, the matchless name of Jesus. Jeremiah 9 21 says, Death has climbed into our windows, and the sword is out there in the streets. And in 2 Kings, as we have read, God said enough, and God had mercy on Jerusalem. And the prophet God went to David and said, David, because David spoke foolishly. David said, ah, God, these people that are dying, I am the one that sinned. Why don't you punish me and my house? He's putting his whole children in trouble. And the prophet, I don't know what you are speaking out in this time of the coronavirus outbreak. And God said, David, offer a sacrifice. Build an altar and offer a sacrifice. We know from Psalm 50 that God does not drink the blood of bulls and goats and bulls as David did. Psalm 50 verse 23 says, He who honors me, he who offers the sacrifice of thanksgiving, him will I show the way of salvation. Him will I show the way of salvation. He who offers sacrifice of thanksgiving, David raised an altar Sorry, I have to. Okay. And the prophet tells, why the prophet? Coronavirus, people don't respect, we, we are counted as non-essential. But God used the prophet. They were the ones that were able to read. Now when you read Second Kings, the Bible says, David saw an angel. When the, let, let us read it. I want us to read it. Second, Second Samuel 24. He says, verse, verse 17. He, no, verse 16 says, And when the angel stretched out his hands over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, it is enough. Now restrain your hand. Coronavirus, it is enough. Now restrain, saith the Lord. And the angel provoking the plague of coronavirus was by the threshing floor of Arauna, the Josephusite. This threshing floor by some scholars is suggested as Golgotha, now. My God. My God. The place that the ultimate sacrifice was made. And as we sing, the blood of Jesus silenced the voice of the enemy, the foe, and the avenger. And David spoke to the Lord when he saw the president was a seer. Blessed is the nation whose president is spiritual. And he saw, verse 17, David saw the angel who was trying the people and causing the plague. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned and done wickedly. This is why he spoke foolishly. Your I pray, let your hand be against me and my house, not on these innocent people who are dying. God bless David, at least. He was not wishing that he and his family would be safe and the other people's children should go 
to the forefront and fight and die. As some people are thinking of going to inject Africans with the plague, with the vaccine. They, they, they disregard humans. Africans are not human, so you may God forgive you. Even I heard that the UK says he's going to Kenya. The blood of Jesus, the Lord is there waiting for you. If you know the army of warriors that are left in prayer, you will keep your own in your laboratories and test it according to ethics. David, verse 18, God came to David and said, erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Arauna. So David, according to the word of the Lord, went up as the Lord has commanded. And Arauna, seeing, uh, let me go to verse 21. Then Arauna said, Why, my Lord, the king, have you come to me? And David said, to buy a threshing floor, to build an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be redrawn from the people. Somebody. To build an altar to the Lord, that coronavirus will stop. What is an altar? A place of sacrifice. In Revelations, we see that at the altar, there is worship. At the altar, there are saints that have been slain that are calling for vindication. David says, I'm offering my sacrifice of worship to stay the plague. And tonight, whilst I was meditating on God's word, one song that kept coming into my heart was this, Hila. I don't know if you are sick in any part of your body or your loved one is now at the hospital with coronavirus and you are fearful, fear not. The song says, in key it says, Oh yeah, 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 it were now yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And God gave me the English version. It goes like this. Gila. Is our God what a sick Jesus can heal he is Jesus can you sing with me? He is Jesus who is sick. Jesus can heal. He loves ah. He loves. Oh God, Menta, Menta. He's the one that mends the broken hearted, broken marriage, broken home. Time of the coronavirus. Lost your job. Some people were just licenciati. They just lost their job. I don't know how they can pay their house rent. Jesus mends that which is broken. Man dies, you are. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 